Hello and welcome. In this episode, I'm going to share four skinwalker stories I found on the internet. Three out of the four stories take place in the southwest United States, a region known for skinwalker activity. Some believe it's the only region where encounters with skinwalkers can happen. I'm not here to argue that point, but I will agree that a majority of the skinwalker stories I see do come from this area. The stories in this episode include a Native American boy being stalked by what he thinks is a skinwalker, an encounter in a park in Phoenix, Arizona, a deer on its hind legs walking around a camp, and a bizarre encounter in the Rocky Mountains. Alright, let's get to the first story. Our first story comes to us from a poster who believes he is being stalked by a skinwalker. He doesn't say where he lives or the area where his encounters took place. He is Native American but not associated with any tribes. He does say that there are a number of tribes in the state where he lives. He is fascinated by legend and lore of his Native American culture and once asked his father who is full-blooded Native American about skinwalkers. His father avoided the subject but did say that a tribe located to the north of where they live is known for being notorious for murders, including some that cannot be explained. The original poster pressed his father for more answers but could not get anything else out of him. His encounters began in the summer of 2017. He lives in an apartment complex with his family and shares a room with his sister. One night at around 11 o'clock, they heard what sounded like a bird call coming from outside but it did not sound normal. It sounded more like a person with a hoarse voice trying to imitate a crow. He and his sister looked at each other, thinking it was strange, but thought nothing else about it. The apartment complex they live in is on the edge of a small town and is known for having a drug problem. They figured it was just somebody on drugs. But the sound persisted until about 2 in the morning. Then he heard the dogs down the street start going crazy, barking at something. Maybe the dogs had just seen and were barking at an animal, but he thought it was too weird to be a coincidence. Every night, he and his sister hear this noise start at approximately 10 or 11 p.m. and continue until about 1 or 2 in the morning. They didn't give it much thought, just thinking there was a weird bird nearby. But then the OP spent the night at his friend's house and they were about to go to sleep when he heard the same exact noise outside his friend's home that he had heard outside of his window. The noise continued until he fell asleep. Another week goes by and the noise picks up each night at the same time, continuing until the early morning hours. At this point, his sister was growing more and more paranoid, but he dismissed it as a dumb bird. However, he had started listening to a lot of skinwalker stories and the similarities between them and his current situation were eerily similar. One night, they had their window open when the noise started. But on this night, it sounded more ragged and sickly than it usually did. It stopped after only a short time and the OP and his sister shrugged at each other before turning their attention back to their phones. The silence was then shattered by an inhuman, blood-curdling scream right outside their window. It sounded like a mix between a baby crying and a dog yelping. His sister screamed and they both hid under their covers, the sound reverberating in their ears. He stayed under his covers for what felt like hours, his heart pounding, until his sister called out to him in a loud whisper asking if it was safe. The OP mustered all of his courage and jumped out of bed to quickly close the window. He saw nothing when he did this. His sister wanted to tell his parents the next morning but he dissuaded her, knowing they wouldn't believe them. He did ask them if they heard something the previous night, but they both said that they didn't. He later brought up what was happening to him to his three friends one night at a sleepover. They thought he was joking, but when he told them that he had a constant sense of dread and felt like he was being followed, even to their houses, this made them want to believe him. And their belief in him seemed to be cemented when the dog went crazy later that night, barking and growling at something outside. When he returned, his sister told him she didn't hear the noise that night. This solidified to him that whatever kept coming to their house each night was, in fact, following him. Everything was really starting to get to him at this point. The feeling of dread was constant. He had trouble sleeping as the noise continued, growing increasingly distorted each night. This continued through the duration of the summer. 
The OP and his sister had grown accustomed to hearing the noise each night. On some nights, they thought they heard more than one, but they didn't care as long as whatever was out there stayed far away. The same feelings of paranoia and dread he experienced at home would follow him to his friends' houses. When he walked his dogs at night, they would stop and stare at something in the tree line before turning and running home. He could barely keep up with them holding on to their leashes as he freaked out while running behind them. His encounters wouldn't be just hearing sounds though as one night he caught a glimpse of what was stalking him. Whatever was making the noises had once again come close to the window. He and his sister prepared themselves for a horrific scream, but it didn't come. Instead, the OP looked at the window, which was open, just as the wind blew the curtains in. They parted briefly, revealing a creature that looked sickly and thin with sunken eyes. It was scowling at him. When the curtains fell back into place, it was gone. After the sighting, they heard the noise less and less, and they wouldn't hear it again until the end of the summer. They only hear this thing on occasion, but the feelings of dread and paranoia persisted. A while later, the OP, his siblings, and their father saw a white deer, which means good luck. But not long after that, his father saw a white wolf sitting on the side of the road watching the cars go by. He doesn't say what this means, but wonders if it's significant. One night, his sister came running out of the room saying she heard scratching at the window. The noises continue to return sporadically and the OP just hopes it stops and he can eventually get a good night's sleep for once. He does say in the comments that he would update if anything else happened, but he never did. He posted his story five years ago, but he has been active since, so I'm pretty sure he is alright. Maybe whatever was stalking him eventually lost interest and moved on. He believes it was a skinwalker. What do you think it was? Our next story comes to us from a poster who admits that they are not familiar with skinwalkers, but has grown up in the desert hearing about them and has always been drawn to scary stories. His encounter took place in a park on the outskirts of a Phoenix, Arizona suburb. Phoenix is right in the middle of a major hotspot for skinwalker activity. The largest population of Navajo live in this region of the United States, and this being a Navajo legend, it is believed by some that this is the only region where skinwalker encounters can happen. I'm not ready to go that far, but I will say that most of the skinwalker stories I hear come from this part of the United States. The night or morning of his encounter took place at a large park on the edge of a Phoenix suburb. The original poster met his friend from high school at around 1 o'clock a.m. to have some beers and to catch up. While walking around a field at the park, they heard what he describes as a loud, repetitive noise coming from the outskirts of the park that they assumed was a coyote. But it continued, and the more they heard it, the more it sounded off. He says it sounded like a soundbite of a child wailing played over and over. It wasn't choppy at all though, and was repeated the exact same way every time, almost as if it had a mechanical element to it. The sound would go on for about 10 seconds, stop for a moment, then start again. He and his friend got annoyed by the sound and headed back to the car to hang out. As soon as they started to leave the area, the noise stopped in an instant. But when they got back to the car, his friend realized he had dropped his phone in the field somewhere. So they drove back out to the field to look for his phone. The second they set foot back in that field, the noise started again, this time coming from a different corner of the park. They found his friend's phone and got out of there as quickly as they could with no further incident. The OP later mentioned to his friend that they could have just had an encounter with a skinwalker. His friend told him he was thinking the exact same thing, but he had been too afraid to say so before. He has never heard anything like that in his life and the whole experience shook him to his core. In so many of these skinwalker stories, they mention sounds being repeated and so many times I have seen the word mechanical used to describe what they are hearing. The sounds are too perfect and repeated too perfectly like on a continuous loop. This to me just adds credence that the poster encountered a skinwalker, especially with the region of the United States where he lives. There are more sightings in Arizona and the surrounding states near Navajo reservations than anywhere else. 
However, I'm not willing to go so far as to say that this is the only region where Skinwalker encounters take place. Some people maintain that this is true, but I just don't think that's the case. In fact, I hear a lot of Skinwalker stories from Canada too. We don't know near enough about these basically unknown creatures to put them in that box to where they can only exist in one area. But I digress. Back to my original point. The sounds and how are they described are a common theme in most of the Skinwalker stories I read. This again, at least to me, just adds credibility to these tales. Let me know what you think below. The next story takes place in Montana and comes from a poster who was only 14 years old when he had an unnerving encounter while on a camping trip. Originally from Minnesota, the original poster was an avid hiker and loved to go backpacking. So when he found a camp in Montana that would take him on a 125 mile hike over the span of 15 days, he was on board. The hike took place approximately 50 miles from Glacier National Park. Glacier National Park is located in northwest Montana near the Canadian border. The park spans for more than 1 million acres and includes parts of two mountain ranges, both of them sub-ranges of the Rocky Mountains, more than 130 lakes, and over 1,000 species of plants and animals. This would also seem to include cryptids, as the park is no stranger to sightings. After a 17-hour drive, his journey began with everything going fine other than the first leg of the hike being basically all uphill while toting a 50 pound pack. After a few days he got used to the rigorous activity but a peculiar feeling settled over the group as they continued. Something felt wrong. They figured it was just a slight bout of homesickness and dismissed the feeling. Another day passed and when they were camping they were unsettled by how eerily quiet the woods around them had become. The OP points out that if you're an avid camper, you know that this is not normal. The group figured there was a bear in the area, so they made a lot of noise as they walked and kept their bear spray ready just in case. But they just couldn't shake the feeling that they shouldn't be there. They pressed on though and reached their next campsite, pitched their tents, and everything settled down a bit. That is, until they were eating dinner. As they ate, they noticed a deer, which was nothing unusual as there are plenty of deer in Montana. But something just wasn't right about this deer. It was extremely skinny and looked to have a broken leg. On top of that was the smell. The putrid, rancid smell of death hung in the air. Unsettled, they made enough noise to scare off the deer, but it ran away on its broken leg like it wasn't injured at all. They were all rattled by the encounter, but their exhaustion overrode their apprehension and they eventually got ready for it and went to bed. The OP woke up to his tent mate shaking him, who was pointing to the front of the tent. There was good lighting from the moon that night and the OP saw the outline of a deer through the tent. But the deer again looked off. Its body was abnormally long and it looked to be standing on its hind legs as it made its way from tent to tent making a bizarre chittering sound. According to the OP, it was a deeply disturbing sound that just felt wrong. He and his friend lay there for about 15 minutes watching this thing walk around the camp before it finally retreated into the woods. The strange chittering sound continued, growing excruciatingly loud for a few seconds before dissipating, leaving an uneasy, eerie silence over the camp. He did not sleep for the rest of the night. The next morning, they packed up camp and left, but not before seeing weird-shaped deer tracks that seemed to resemble a foot. They had the uneasy feeling like something was watching them for the rest of the trip and ended up cutting their hike short to 12 days instead of the originally planned 15. No one slept well during the trip, especially after the OP and his friend told everyone what happened. Since the incident, the OP doesn't go into the woods without a firearm and when he does, he can't help but feel like he is being watched. He doesn't think he could return to Montana and feel safe. I've said this before. It's a shame when these beings take away our sense of safety and our love for an activity such as hiking, camping, or hunting. In this case, the OP still goes into the woods, so it didn't completely take away something he loves, 
But being that he now feels the need to be armed when he does go camping or hiking, and always feels like he's being watched, his sense of security was taken from him. I'm glad he still finds time to do something that he loves, but in a lot of these stories I hear, the people give it up completely because of what they go through. And then there are the ones who experience PTSD after their encounter. As for this encounter, a lot of people describe what he does here. A deer that looks sickly or deformed and just doesn't seem right. But to have it come back and walk around their camp on two legs? I don't think I'd feel safe going back to Montana either if I were him. The final story of this episode takes place in the Rocky Mountains. The Rocky Mountains are the largest mountain system in North America, ranging from western Canada to New Mexico in the United States, covering approximately 3,000 miles or 4,800 kilometers. They also happen to cover an area where a large number of skinwalker sightings are reported. The original poster and her fiancé decided to get away from the real world for a while and take a 37-mile trip through the range. Most of the ground they covered was done so on bicycle, but they always hiked when they gained elevation. The parking lot was full when they arrived, but they only saw two people throughout their entire trip, which the OP thought was weird. This had her a little on edge from the get-go. Strange things began to happen about an hour into their trip. They had reached an elevation of about 2,000 feet when they encountered the only two people they would see during their entire journey. The people acted odd and would not make eye contact, looking at the ground and not even acknowledging the OP or her fiancé when they spoke. They thought it strange, but kept going. At one point, her fiancé stopped her and asked if she could hear the strange sounds that he heard. She did, describing them as sounding like low, deep drums mixed with wind that she says sounded mechanical. She then mentions robotic cricket sounds. They joked that it was aliens but dismissed it as thunder or an aircraft. Not long after, the OP began hearing voices. It sounded like more than one. Then she heard laughter, but they did not see anyone else on the trail or in that area. They kept going and eventually got lost, ending up arriving at a small pond. They followed a trail behind the pond to a dead end where they found a surprising amount of animal bones. There were more than five or six big elk or deer skeletons. She began to back away and noticed that her fiancé was visibly shaken by the unsettling scene. The sight made her want to go home, but they had come such a long way and she did not want to turn back now. They left the area where the bones laid scattered and eventually found the trail. The OP's fiancé then brought up the unnerving silence that filled the woods. She stopped and inspected the area her internal alarm starting to go off as her nerves heightened. The unnatural silence persisted. Even the wind had stopped blowing. It all seemed so surreal and so unnatural. But they kept going and made it almost to the top of the mountain before running out of food. This was concerning because the OP is hyperglycemic and she thought she had packed enough food. They turned around and started heading back, trying to come up with a plan should she start to have health problems. Adding to the tension was the ongoing, unnerving silence that had engulfed the mountain. Everything just seemed off. That's when she saw it, just inside the trees off the trail not far ahead of them. She saw what she thought was a person standing up from a squatting position. She thought it was looking directly at her while shuffling back and forth on two feet. Her fiancé turned and looked at her after he heard her reaction to this thing in the woods. He froze when he saw it a dark figure moving through the trees before dropping down on all fours. They hurried forward to try to get a better look at whatever was running through the trees, finding an area where the trees weren't as dense, where they saw a deer running unnaturally slow through the forest. The OP describes the humanoid thing running extremely fast when she saw it and how slow this deer seemed to be moving. It was almost like the legs were moving too fast for as slow as the deer was running. Her fiancé tried to dismiss what they saw, saying that they had seen two deer, but she isn't so sure. But why was it running so slow? That she could not figure out. It was like the deer wanted to be seen instead of it trying to instinctively escape as fast as it could. This made her think that it was not a deer. They turned and ran down the mountain, 
not taking or even considering taking a break. Dusk had begun to settle over the range when they reached the parking lot. The parking lot was now clear, but they still had not seen anyone else during their short day trip. She had fallen twice on their descent and kept running the events of the day through her mind. She couldn't help but think what might have happened if she had been seriously injured while trying to escape this thing. She wants to convince herself that her eyes were playing tricks on her and this thing was not a skinwalker. She had all but convinced herself she was seeing things until she saw how unnerved her fiancé was when he asked her what they saw. He hadn't seen the humanoid thing stand up from a crouching position, just a dark shape moving through the woods before he saw the deer. She hasn't told him she saw a person first, or what she thought was a person, and wonders if this thing was a skinwalker. Again, in this story, the word mechanical is used to describe the sounds heard by the OP and her fiancé. This again adds credibility to this story. As for the events that took place when she saw the person, then the deer, I usually discredit a story where someone says they saw a skinwalker transform. But these are usually where the poster has eyes on the creature and watches it visibly transform into a person or vice versa. I just don't see a skinwalker allowing someone to see them transform. Seems like something they would go out of their way to hide from an onlooker. That's purely just my opinion and speculation though. In this case, they didn't actually see it physically transform. Then again, the person she saw might have been something else entirely, and by that I mean another cryptid, and the deer could have just been in the right place at the right time. But she did describe the deer's running as unusual. What do you think they encountered? Could it have been a skinwalker? And that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed these stories. If you'd like to hear more stories like these and other types of cryptids, make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you want to send me your story, I'd love to read it. My email is wolfwhocriedcryptid at gmail.com. I will also put it in the description below. With your permission, I may want to use it in an episode. Even if you'd prefer that I didn't share your story on my channel and just want someone to listen, email me we can privately talk about your encounter. And please remember to keep it civil in the comment section. No one deserves to be ridiculed whether they believe or not. Thank you for listening. I'll catch you at the next episode.